Hello, my name is Laura Hackle and I will be covering member pins today. SDS2 2017 includes a new feature, member pins. They are associated with a member's end. This allows the user to pin a member to or the member end to a view, another member line, or another member end. In this webinar, you will learn how to auto pin member ends, the difference between system, user, and disabled member pins and how moving an entity that a pin is associated with will affect the model. If you have any questions, you can type them in and I will answer them at the end of the webinar. So what is a member pin? So if I zoom in here, you'll notice in 2017, there are these little color things at the member ends. These are called member pins. So I will be associating a member end to something else, such as I could associate it to another member, like this column. I could associate it to a view. I could associate it to a plane. So we're going to be covering these throughout the uh, webinar. This would be extremely useful if I had a revision and it came back and I needed to move a grid over or a view over, I guess I should say, uh, five feet. Then the members could move with it, which I'll demo later on. By default, member pins are disabled, so you do not have to use them if you don't want to. Most situations, you're going to leave the member pins off unless you have a revision that came back, and then you can apply them as needed. Custom members will also have a pin. Uh, these, can, these will not be auto-pinned, but you will need to assign them manually, and so I'll get through user pins later on. Member pins are extremely powerful tool and they can affect your entire model which we will be covering during the webinar. So where do you get the setup information and what do these colors mean here? If I go into my options, job options, and then there is member pin options. So we have what these different colors mean. So there's a system one, which is kind of a greenish color, greenish gray. If I auto pin it, then it will show green on the member end. So right now it's just a magenta, which I'll get to in a second. And then it would be assigning, uh, letting the system assign what the member end is pinned to. So this is kind of like a system connection. And then we have user, so that would be yellow. And that means I'm taking control of the member end and what it's pinned to. And then we have disabled, which is magenta. That just means that it's a state that it's in, and that just means uh, that it's turned off. So also it means that the member pins are not in use. So if I moved a grid over, these member pins or these members would not be associated with that view, and then um, they would not move with it. We also have unused, which you would not see as an option, but if I delete this member end, or delete this, sorry, this member pin, then it would just turn white. That just means that it's not disabled and it's also not system or user. So it's just kind of in a blank state. We have default new members to a disabled restraints. So that just means by default, when I put in a new member, it's going to be disabled for member pins. Member ends can be stretched just like previous versions. So if I select that member end, right click, I can do st still do move stretch members. Um, by default, you're going to see these member ends are turned on just so you can see them. So I can edit this if I wanted to. That shows me the member pin, which I'll get back to in a second, but it also says it's disabled. If I don't want to see these member ends in my display options, there is member ends always displayed. So I could turn that off. I'm going to learn leave it on throughout this webinar just because it makes it easier when you're messing around with uh, member pins. And over here for member ends as well, if I check that on or turn that on in the little tree over here, I could further go into what I want to see in my display options, my left end, right end, and then I could have system user disabled. So maybe I just wanted to see all my left ends, or sorry, um, yeah, all my left ends that were user. And I could hit OK, and it would just show me all the ones that are user.
you did see here if I just checked on user up here it says member ends wall just always displayed uh, it turns red and also there's an eye over here I'll get to that later on in a different webinar it just means that something has been changed down here Another thing that I'm going to mess around with quite a bit is uh, having my selection filter set to member ends. It's just going to make it easier so I'm not selecting the actual member when I edit. Only the member end is getting highlighted. So for example down here, if I double click on it, it says it's disabled and it's magenta. If I select it, so I just make a box around it just so that member end is selected, I can hit delete. And it doesn't say that you're deleting a member end. You can never do that. But it's going to ask me, do I want to delete the pin that is on that member end? I'm going to say yes. So now what I stated before, if there's nothing there, if you deleted a member pin, it's going to turn white. So if I edit that, it is not disabled. It's not user. So there's just nothing assigned to it. So I actually want to auto pin this. So I can select this, right click, and there's auto pins. There's also in my model pull down, member and pins. There's pin new member ends. We'll get to that later on. Auto pin or PP on your keyboard. Pin add, pin edit, and pin erase. We'll get to these throughout the webinar. So I'm just going to select this, right click, and auto pin. Now you'll see it turns to like a greenish color, greenish gray. If I edit that, you'll see some new things pop up here. So now it's no longer disabled. I have a member plane that it's associated with, so this specific end, it's not the whole member, it's just this end, is associated with its own member plane. So it says B32, I can zoom out here, this is B32, so it's associated with its own member's plane. So I can bind to plane of the web center, so it's going to keep it along the plane of the center of the beam. I can ignore um, the member rotation so if I had that checked off and I had a rotation on this beam um, then it would not stay in the plane and it will follow the rotation of the beam which we'll get to and then I could also bind to the plane of the top flange so maybe I don't want it to the web center and I just want to bind to the top flange there so this is kind of like restraining that member end we also have that it is pinned to B21, so this is B21, and it's pinned to another member, so it's pinned to the member line. So you see the plane kind of represents a plane, and to a member line will represent two arrows here. So it's kind of a guide to let you help you out. There is an offset that I could put from that member line, so I could put it in the X, Y, and Z. I could offset from that member line. And then we have half nominal depth, and that would be for vertical bracing, which we'll get to later on. So if I were to raise this elevation here, just on this left end of B21, it's going to keep it in this plane of this member, so it's not going to move back and forth. It's going to keep in the plane of the member that it's in, or the line that it's already in. And then it's also going to follow along the member line of B21. So I'm going to edit B21 and change this up to 116 foot 8. Now you'll see that it raised with it. I'm just going to select these two and I just want to hide my unselected so I can see that. And it followed along that member line as I raised it up, but it also kept it in this plane. I'm going to open up my second floor here. So as you can see, it's still in the plane that it was in. So I'm going to drop this elevation back down and show you a couple different features that you can pin as well. So now, maybe I don't care 
that it's in the plane. I just want to keep it along that member line. So I can delete what it's pinned to. So by auto pin, it automatically pinned to the plane and the member. So I'm just going to delete it and hit OK. So now if I edit it, I'm just having to this member, member line. And I'm going to raise this back up. Now you don't see that it changes that much, but it's no longer in that plane. So it's still following along that member line, but it's no longer associated, it's not locked into that plane. I'm going to change this back. Let's see if I can get it correct. Move it back over here. Okay, so another one I'm going to do. is I want to make sure it's still locked in the elevation. So I'm on the second floor. I want it to stay within the second floor still. So I don't want it to raise in elevation. And then I also want it to be along that member line. So what I can do here is come in here and edit it. So since I moved this back, it relocked into the plane. I'm going to delete that. So it's still along the member line. Um, I think these got changed. And then I'm going to hit add. And I can pin it to, there's certain things that you can pin to. So I want to pin to a view. I want to pin to the second floor. Well, since I can't see the second floor, that's okay. I'll just pin to one. And then when I come down here, I can see my view. I can just change what it is getting associated with. So I want it to pin to that second floor. So you see right over here, it gave a plane. So it's going to lock into my second floor. And I could put an offset, which I'll get to later on. And then I'm going to come up here and change my elevations. So now it is locked in at my second floor and it is locked in at that member line. So it's finding the nearest point that it can make a connection. So it's still on the second floor and then it follows that member line. So it's just whatever intersection it can find the closest point to make that connection. So there are eight different situations in which you'll pin but the most common ones that we're going to cover today are you can pin to a view, which um, kind of what I just showed, the second floor there, you can pin to a view. If you were to move a view, then the member ends could stretch with it. So I'll get to that later on. We're going to move up the second floor. We're also going to move over a grid line. You can pin to a member line, which we just did. You can pin to B21, for example. You can pin to a member plane, so I just covered that one. If I wanted to keep it in its same plane, um, I would just associate it with the plane there. I can do spliced ends, so the vocabulary is a little iffy on that one, but it should be for like vertical brace where you're doing like X bracing or a cross brace, and you want to keep those collinear uh, where they meet. So if I were to have it locked in... Um, I'll come back to these later. I'm going to go ahead and hit show members. So a good example over here. I'll get to, right now they're disabled, but I could make a spliced end right here and pin these two. And then if I were to move this elevation up, these would still stay collinear and move up with that elevation. So if I need to move it up six inches, which I'll get to later. You can also do to other members end. So a good example of that would be like for a splice connection for a beam to beam. I'll get to that later on as well. So member pins will try to get down to a specific point. So it's going to look at views first. Then it will look at members and so on and get down to a specific point. 
You can't change the order of how these are pinned right now, and you can't change the priority. So some of the examples. Um, so just for some of the testing that we've done, these are kind of what the auto pin. So if I selected that, right click auto pin for beams. So what we've noticed is the beams, they get down to, they look at, they lock in at views, they go to members, and they go to its own plane. So that beam that we just showed on the second floor, it locked in at members, it associated with another member line, and it also locked in at its own plane. Columns typically just associate with views. I'll get to that later on. If I were to auto pin a vertical brace, it will look at views, so maybe it'll pin to the second floor. It will also pin to other members if it's associated with a beam or a column. And then spliced ends, like I said, if it's like cross bracing. Horizontal bracing will go to view, so like a second floor example. To other members if it's framing into beams or columns. And then to an other member's plane. The joists, um, same thing as horizontal bracing. Stairs and handrail and miscellaneous will just look to views right now. You would have to add in more pins if you want to restrain them a little bit more. And then trusses, what I've typically seen is they go for even spaced members, which I'll get to later on. So going to views. So let's say I wanted to move over a view. So let's say my grid line A, and I needed to stretch that or move it over, a revision came back and it needed to move over five feet. What we used to have to do is you would have to re-add that view and then you would have to move stretch and then you would have to stretch all this over as well. So what you can do now is we have a move view. So I'm gonna select all these first. So I'm gonna turn my selection filter to member ends. I'm gonna make a box around all of these so you can see that all my member ends are highlighting here. I'm going to hit delete. So what you typically have to do if you um, don't want these disabled anymore, you can just delete that member pin, select it again if you want it to auto pin, right click auto pins. So it went through and now if I zoom in, all these are changed to a different color, they're no longer magenta and they're auto pinned. So I'm going to open up, let's say, um, I'll go to my AB plan. I'm just going to turn my depth check off. And I need to move this grid A over five feet. So if I go to my file, views and grids, move view, I'll select the grid I need to move. So A, right click, OK. I'll select my reference point. And then I'll select the direction I want to go in or my second point. I'm going to type in five feet and enter. Now, if you see here, all these members that were associated with A have also stretched over. So I'm going to confirm my move. And now you'll see that they all stretched over with it. Now, like I talked about custom members, I would have had to manually assign that. So right now it's just going to the top of wall for a view. That's what we said, custom. Um, so I would have to manually add in a view there and stretch it over to A. So I could do add to view. Um, and then I would have had to pick A. So you would have to see A in there. All right, so how about um, for finite grid lines? If you pin a member and that member is not completely within the top and bottom elevations of a finite grid line, then it will not pin to that view. So what I mean here is I'm going to open up my AB plan. I'm going to come over off to the left. And then I'm going to add in a grid. Let's just go all the way up. I'm going to call this S. 
So I'm going to have this turned on, auto pin to view, or auto pin to this view. So that means that if I had um, this option turned on over on the left side, which I'll get to, then it's auto going to auto pin to that view. Or if I right click and do auto pin, it'll auto or it will automatically associate with that specific view. So what I mean for finite is for if I put a column in and my bottom was at 99 foot 2 and my top was at 109 foot 2 and I were to have the column go up to 126 foot 0 then it would not associate with this view because it's not completely that member is not completely within the top and bottom. So I'm just going to put 126 foot 0 because I want to make sure that the column is completely within that view. And then I'm going to click OK. I'm going to add in another one here. I'll call this T. Like I said, you want to make sure they're within that view. And then I'm just going to make a diagonal one here and call that U. Alright, so now I want to add in my columns. So I'm going to do column add. But before I do that, over on the left hand side here, it's the only thing that's not grayed out. That I can turn on or like override my setup. So if I turn that on, it's going to automatically pin these. So I'm going to click on this one. I'll show you in a second. And I'll just make these. Just copy those down. So what I mean by that is if I zoom in here, it's a system pin. So that means that when I check this on, that means all the new members that I add are going to auto pin. So I can override my setup. So if I went into my uh, job options and go member pin options, this is still checked on to default new members to disabled. So I'm just overriding the setup option. So now I have these in here. And if I come in here and edit one of these, I can see that the columns have pinned to views. So it's pinned to S, which is the vertical one. It's pinned to 1, which is my horizontal grid. And then it's pinned to my AB plan, because that's the bottom. So I, I'm editing right now my bottom pin, which I'll get to the top and bottom pins in a second. And then if we come down here, this one is pinned to U. That's my diagonal one. It's pinned to 1.9, my horizontal, and then it's pinned to my AB plan. And then down at the very bottom one, we have that one pinned to 2.1, which is my horizontal, T, which is the one running vertical, and my AB plan. I could also rotate out here and you can see the planes that it's associated with. Okay. So let's say I want to move my U up. So I'm going to turn my depth check off and I'm going to go to view or file views and grids move view. I select the view second select the grid line I want to do you right click OK select my reference point and move up five feet now I pinned it to what the auto pin was and if I come in here this one stayed this one moved along 1.9 but it moved on U as well, and then this one stayed at T. So they're restrained right now. So if I said no, and I come back in here, oops, this is where turning on member ends helps. I see I must have selected my top pin, which I'll get to. So it's pinned to S, which is what I want, but it's also pinned to 1. So if I were to move you up 
this column's not going to move with you because it's restrained to one. It can only move or stay on, or it's locked at one here, that horizontal. So I'm going to, instead of pinning to one, I want it to pin to you. So I want it to move up in the S direction, but I also want it to move with you. So I'm going to drop this down to one and pick you instead. For this one, it's locked at 1.9. I don't want it to be locked there, so I'm just going to delete that. And it's pinned to you, so I'll move with you again. And then this bottom one, I edit it. It's pinned to 2.1, the horizontal, so it won't move with you as it moves up 5 feet. The roof framing is fine, and the T is fine. So 2.1, I'm going to drop that down, and I want it to move or associate with the grid line U. Now another thing. Since pins are associated with member ends, you want to make sure that you have it for both of them. So I'm going to turn this off and go into U, and you have to also associate your bottom pins. Otherwise... Let me show you really quick. I'm going to go back to if I move you. Move it up five feet. You'll see that they all kind of stretch there. They're not one column. Because I'm only stretching my right end, or sorry, I'm only stretching my top of my column. So I'm going to say no. And I want to make sure I restrain the bottom as well. So I'm going to go into U, edit this member end. Like I said, S is fine. I'll drop this to U. I don't want 1.9 and then I have to come over on the right side to edit it 2.1 I'll change to you alright so I'm gonna go back to my AB plan take off my depth check move view select you Select my reference point and go up five feet. Okay, so those moved along S and along U. This moved along U and along T. And then this one was not restrained in the vertical direction, so it just moved along U. Now, if I wanted a workaround there, or I guess I wanted to make sure that it moved in the uh, vertical direction as well, I could just come in here really quick and maybe I just want to create a grid line oh, come on. it's not wanting to okay let's do it the easier way So I create this as V maybe 126 foot 0 and I do placement only here. So then I just need to reassociate that one. So I'm just going to open up V and then I can just quickly edit that member end. It's locked in at U my roof framing and I want this to be V instead of 1.9 I just need to come down and do the bottom as well okay
Oops. Go back to my AB plan, turn off my depth check, move grids, remove view, select my reference point, go up five feet, and now you see they all moved in the directions I wanted them to with the me correct member pins associated. I'm going to go ahead and say yes to that. And then we have them, they moved up in the correct area. So as you can see, these are a very powerful tool. These members were doing exactly what we were telling them to via their pins. So maybe I also wanted to move up, or I needed to move up my second floor up six inches. A revision came back. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up grid line three. I'm going to turn off my depth check. And so we have our second floor here. This also works if I were to just recut sex second floor. So if I wanted to move that up six inches, so if I just did add grid line, and I put in my Z six inches, I could go from here to here, and it'll ask me to replace my second floor, and I would just say yes, and then it would still move that up since it's associated with the second floor. Or I can just do move grids, select it, go in the direction, and go six inches, and it moves everything up six inches. I'll confirm my move. Now you see here, it kept that collinear. So if I come in here and edit this pin now that it's auto pinned, you'll see the arrows pointing and within the two members and it says that it is a spliced ends. So it is the line from the left end of vertical brace 57 to the right end of VB 58. Then also it's associated with VB 56. So it's also associated with this member. Another thing, if I edit this vertical brace up here, and I can rotate around, you can see the arrows. So it's associating with column C7, and it's also associating with the beam of B15. And you'll see here, it says offset from member line, and it's set at half nominal depth for vertical bracing. So if I were to move maybe just this beam up, maybe move it up to 118, Instead of having to re-put in that vertical brace, it keeps that collinear and moves that up with that beam. Another thing, so let's say I'll go to so maybe this end only needed to move up 10 inches. So I can edit this, and I could edit the member and raise that up 10 inches, or I could edit that pin. So the pin is associated with the column that it's framing into, and it's also associated with the second floor. Now I said before that there's an offset here. So if I put in an offset, I could put in maybe at 10 inches and hit OK. It'll raise just that member end up 10 inches. And now you see also, if I edit that, it turned to user. So I kept the other side. And if I edit that beam, it automatically raised it up 10 inches as well. We have for this column, if I wanted this column associated with this member line, so maybe I needed to move this member line or this beam up two feet. And I want this column to stretch with it. So if I edit this column right now, 
it's going into different views. So it's associating with 2.1, this vertical. It's associating with the roof framing plan. Well, I'm not going to want that unless I put an offset of 2 foot there if I want that to move up with it. So I'm just going to delete that one. And then it's also associating with A. Well, maybe I don't care about A, so I'm just going to delete that one as well. So right now, it's just associating with 2.1 here. I can add, and I'm going to do to another member line. It'll say locate the member line to pin to. So I want to pin it to B33. So if you look up here, now it is associated with B33. And I'll click OK. Now, if I edit this beam here and just move it up two feet, you see it's stretched with it. Now, down here, I talked about spliced ends, or sorry, not spliced ends, to another member's end. So if I edit this one, it is member end plane. So it's going to another member end plane. It's going to the second floor. So it's keeping it at the second floor. Well, I don't want that. I want it to raise up when I want it to raise up. And when I raise this one up, I want it to raise the right end up as well. And it's also going to A, the grid line that we're on. Well, I don't really want any of those. So what I'm going to do is select this to member ends, select both of them, and just delete it. I'm going to associate my own that I want with it. So I'm going to go over on the left side below the icon to um, override the setup. There is pin add. I'm going to do to other members end. It will say select your ends to restrain. So I'm going to select both of these ends right click OK and now when I edit it it's saying that it is for exact location to other members I could lock the elevation if I want I don't want to I want it to be able to move up and down and it's not also not associated with the level so if I did lock elevation I could associate it with a specific level now when I move these up I want this bottom of this column to move up with it so if I edit this one, it is pinned to 2.1, that's fine. It's pinned to the second floor, well I don't want that. And it's pinned to A, I don't care about that either. So I'm going to hit add, and I want to pin it to this member's end down here. Now if I didn't do that, and I just left it at 2.1, if I edit and change this elevation up to one foot, 118 foot zero, and I didn't associate this, you see that it does not know to move that up because it's not associated with that member line. So I'm going to move this back down. And I'm going to edit this. Click Add. Go to another member line. Select the beam that I want it to be associated with now. And you'll see up here it's associated now with B115. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to move this elevation up to 118 foot zero. Now you'll see that this moved up with this end. And then since I associated with this with the member end, or sorry, the member line of B115. And then associate with that member line and moved up as well. So like I said, you're going to mainly use these just for revisions. You're not going to auto pin everything in your model. I auto pinned everything in mine just to show these examples. But you would probably just do a specific space. And then if you were done and you don't want it to be associated anymore, you could select all these and just disable them or select everything and uh, delete it if you wanted to. So you could be done with them.
So we also have the hip and valley. So if you've been through basic training class, let's go to my mezzanine. We have our hip and valley roof here. If I shift out of here, so you'll see that I accidentally forgot to do intersection of member and uh, construction line, and now they're all flat. Well, before you would just have to, it'd be easier to just delete it. But if I edit one of these, it is, since I auto pinned it, it is pinned to B89. So B89 is its own member. It's associated with its member plane. So the web center, it's locked in at the plane. And then it's also associated with B87. So B87 is this long beam right here that maybe I need to raise up. So let's say I raise this up to where it needs to be at 114 foot 6. Go ahead and turn this off. And now you see all these members new, since they were associated with that member line, and I changed that elevation, they all moved up with it. We also have trusses. So if I open up one here. So we have our truss. If I edit one of these, trusses are going to typically do even spacing. So it's saying that it's even spacing for all of these trusses along this beam here. Maybe I wanted to or I needed to move that B or grid line B over to the left five feet. So I can do move view. Sorry. If you accidentally have something selected, it doesn't work so well. Move view, select my grid line, right click OK, select my reference point, and move it over five feet. So now you see that they're all even spacing. If I move it over, it keeps that even spacing there. I'll confirm my move. and then it kept that even spacing. You can also do that with beams. So I'll just open up my second floor. I have some construction lines already added here. So I'm just going to add in sure. So if I edit this, it's to another member in a plane. I want to make this even spacing. So I'll just select this. I'll go to member ends and select all of these and delete them. And then I'm going to select all of them again. Actually, I'm going to go to pin add first. Go to even spaced members. It's going to say locate member line to pin to. I want to pin it to B120. Then it says select ends to restrain. So I want to restrain all of those ends. Right click OK. And now when I edit one of these, it is set to even spacing. And it's saying from that beam down there, my space one is one foot over. And my space two, so in this case it's left and right end, is one foot over. So if I want to edit that, I can just select all of these, right click edit, and maybe I want to change that to two feet over. Now it has kept my even spacing, but it has moved this one still as at one foot over on my left end, and on my right end is now moved it over two feet.
So that concludes today's webinar on member pins. In this webinar, we covered how to auto pin members, the difference between system user and disabled pins, how moving an entity that is pinned or associated with another member or view will affect the model. And um, we also covered how powerful these, this tool could be.